burning down pretty good now. It's wasted all this time and effort. Let's give this another shot. Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill, glad you could join me. Today we're going to take a look at Native American ceremonial rattles. Yeah, welcome Stay back. Stay tuned. Uh, I want to do a video on uh, how to make uh, ceremonial rattles for a while now and I figured Felt led that this would probably be a, a good time to do it. Um, rattles are uh, a very important instrument to, uh, to the native people. They uh, not only are they used for music and dance, uh, keeping rhythm and time uh, with the drums, but they're also uh, very important in ceremonial type work, and they can be used. To uh, to uh, actually uh, for meditative purposes and to uh, achieve altered states of consciousness, consciousness uh, such as during vision quests and uh, things of that nature. They're very interesting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show a traditional way of doing these, and we're gonna use all natural materials for this project. We're gonna use yucca for the stitching. Um, these can be traditional uh, rawhide uh, rattle heads and uh, I'm going to do this as minimalist as possible with all natural materials and uh, right down to uh, harvesting the stick which is the handle which the head is attached to and I'm going to show how to do that um, ceremonially uh, and respectfully to the tree so that the spirit of the tree is still in the wood and I'm going to explain all of that as we go on so uh, and that part of it I'm actually going to put in the back of the video because I realize there's uh, people out there who just want to make the rattle and not really get into the spiritual aspect of it and so I'm using this opportunity to um, share with all of you aspects of my native upbringing. Um, I'm three-quarter Scottish, uh, one-quarter uh, Comanche and Miwok. I was raised in a uh, Scottish slash Native American family, so I had a lot of the uh, spiritual philosophy um, practices and also uh, had a lot of the uh, a lot of skills passed on to me as far as survival and bushcrafting and things of that nature but with more of the native side of it thrown in there so but anyways uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in here so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, this is probably gonna be a pretty long video I might even break it into two parts so uh, so the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna cut out the rattle head here. It's going to be a two-piece uh, head from rawhide. 
and then we're going to stitch it together and then we're going to pack it with uh, soil to form it out and allow it to dry and retain its shape. So with that said, what we're going to do here is I have a stick and the stick is about three and a half inches long. Yeah, maybe three inches. We have to account for shrinkage because rawhide will shrink about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch. So the first thing we're going to do we're going to find about the center point of the stick here. Put a little mark. And I have enough room here on the end of this rawhide. Now what I'm using for rawhide is just rawhide dog chews. I use those for a lot of projects because they're, they're easy to obtain. And rawhide in its natural form is hard. How I got this soft and pliable you take your rawhide dog chews and just soak them in water. Put them in a kettle of water. Put a saucer or a cereal bowl or whatever on them because they want to float. So put something on them which will hold them down under the water and uh, let them soak overnight. When you get up in the morning you can unroll them. They'll be rolled up. I'm sure all of you have seen rawhide dog chews. They usually come rolled up something like this. And if you, uh, you soak them overnight by morning, they'll uh, be soft and pliable. And this is what I use for the majority of my, my projects, and, and it seems to work really well. So you can find dog shoes at uh, pet stores and Walmart and different places like that. Okay, so what we're going to do here is... We're going to, this stick's about three inches. You want, you want your rattle head to be about three, three and a quarter, three and a half. So I'm just making sure I have enough circumference here to pull this off. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a mark at the center of this center of the stick. I'm going to put a mark right here on the rawhide. Those are my reference points so I can keep this thing lined up. And then out here on the end I'm going to account for shrinkage. So we're basically going to make a circle here. It doesn't have to be exact, but you should have it fairly close. And you don't have to use charcoal to mark this. You can use a pen. Uh, I'm just going as minimalist and using as, uh, as much natural material as I can. Actually, I'm using all natural material in the construction of this. Because this is actually going to be a ceremonial rattle. And... Uh, I want it to be as natural and pure as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go out about a quarter of an inch past the ends here. And we'll reverse, flip this 180 degrees. Or actually 90 degrees. Line up our marks. Same deal. About a quarter inch. About past the edge. Now we're going to fill in the
even fill in some of the other gaps on here. So now we have Once we make one side, we can use use it as a template for the other side. So there is our circle. And I think that's probably not too bad. Down here, we're going to leave, I'm going to get the other side. The other half will be down here, but we have to cut. I want to leave just enough room here because we have to cut this is where the stick will go. I want to make sure I have enough room here. And it looks like we probably do. We're going to be pretty close, but I want to use as much of the rawhide as I can here. This one will actually, because I'm going to have to put the little the little tab at the bottom here on this side. Trying to get some uh, marks on here so we get an idea, get an idea of what we're doing here. This should work. We'll cut this out and then we'll lay this over here and make sure we have enough room to pull it off. If not, I have more rawhide here. I'm actually making two of these today. I'm only going to demonstrate one though. I 
I was going to, uh, you can use scissors for this if you wish. I'm using a knife, keeping things kind of minimal. And this is going to shrink somewhat, so I'm actually going to cut just to the outside of this mark. To be safe to account for the shrinkage Okay, so just cleaning up the edges here a little bit. Alright, so there is one half. It came out pretty clean. Okay, so now we'll use need the stick anymore because now we have a template. This looks like it's going to be a little tight here. Thinking we can probably pull that off. 
got a little edge there. I think when it's stitched, it'll be okay. Rawhide likes to move around, has a tendency to move around on you when you're trying to work with it. So you have to really hold it down tight. Double check it, make sure it's not drifting, moving around here. See it drifted on me a little bit here. You have to really watch this because it'll it'll move to the point it'll screw your project up and you have to start over again. I said you can use a pair of scissors if that's easier for you. I'm just trying to go minimal on this. Alright, that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, reposition the camera. We're going to get some holes punched here, and uh, I shall return. Stay tuned. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and start punching holes in here. Just want to make sure you are pieces stay aligned. 
they do have a tendency to, uh, as I mentioned, they'll, they'll move on you, so you have to really be careful. So I'm going to run holes about every... about every three-eighths of an inch. And I'm not going to have you guys sit there and watch me do this all the way around, just giving you an idea how to get it started. Just run them about every three eighths. Keep your edges even. Start at a spot, just work your way all the way around. So that's all you got to do. Just uh, pick a spot starting location and then just about every three-eighths of an inch just work your way all the way around down here not across the bottom but down the side and then up the side I'll probably finish this here on the edge this is where the stick will go in we're gonna stitch the sides here this will stay open down on the edge so that's what we have so far so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera the video and uh, finish this up and then we'll uh, move to the next uh, to the stitching stay tuned Okay, got the holes punched. And now we can get to the stitching part. So let me go ahead and get set up for that and I will be right back. Stay tuned. Okay. 
what we're going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to stitch this up with uh, yucca fibers and get some of this out of the way here. I have a couple thorns here that I improvised into needles. If you didn't catch that video on the channel that uh, I profiled these with, I'll, uh, I'll include that in the description box below. So what we're going to do is here, have a couple bundles of stuff out of the way. Yucca fibers here. I used to stitch this with. I'm going to show you how to attach this stuff out of the way. Show you how to attach the uh, thorns on here that we're going to use as a needle. And we're going to use, we're going to put one at either end of the cordage and we're going to use an X pattern all the way around this. So the first thing we're going to do is dampen the fiber. It's a lot easier to work with if it's damp. This is just plain water. Just dampen your fingers. Run the cordage through your fingers. Now these thorns, I left a little lip at the top. Again, I'll include that video. In the uh, description box below. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a single overhand knot. Just like that. Just a single overhand. Take the top of the needle, the thorn, run it through your loop, and then just tighten it. Just like that. And it's securely fastened. Go to the other end, do exactly the same thing. Single overhand, top of the needle through there, tighten it just below the below the lip. So now we have two needles, one at either end. Run it. Run it through a hole. Even up your ends so they're fairly even. They don't have to be exact, but fairly. Now, how we're going to do this is you take your needle on the left, pass it over the top of your material to the next hole up, left needle over the top, pass it through back to the left. Just like that. Needle on the right, 
pass it over the material through the same hole back to the right. Snug it down. Same pattern, needle on the left, pass it over the material, next hole up. Needle on the right, over the material, back through the same hole, and to the right. Cordage is already drying out. It absorbs the moisture pretty fast. We're back to the one on the left. Next hole up. Pass it through. One on the right, over the top, same hole, pass it through, back to the right. It's just a repeating pattern. Snug it down. That's what we have so far. Same deal, over the top, next hole up. And you just repeat the pattern. Pattern repeats over and over again. Left needle over the top of the material through the next hole. Left needle over the top through the hole back to the left. So left goes to left, right goes to right. right over the top back to the right pass it through the same hole snug it down You just keep keep repeating the same pattern. When you get to the end where you run out of cordage, so you're not going to have enough to get all the way around this. When you run out, well, I'll just show you what we're going to do when we get to that point. Whoop, see my line just. came off the end here. Single overhand came loose, so I just gotta snug it back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep working this. 
Well, actually, I'll just keep rolling footage until we get, because we're going to be to the end here, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to deal with that when we run out of cordage here and we have to bring another piece in. So it's very simple to do. Just keep repeating your pattern. It gives you a nice X pattern on your border. It's really nice. You don't get any con we don't have any contrast here. I mean I could have dyed this fiber black or red. And like I said, you don't have to use you can use whatever you want on these. I'm just doing this all natural. But you can use whatever you want. all a matter of personal preference. Okay, we're getting really close. We're almost out of cordage. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to demonstrate. Ah, rough on the legs here. This is what we have so far. So I'm going to demonstrate what we're going to do here. To get the needle off, just slide your Cordage. Instead of picking away at the, the knot, just slide it right off the end, just like that. Come around to the other side, same deal. Slide it right off on the end. Boom. Quick and easy, you don't have to fight with it. Since we're out of cordage, go ahead and dampen these again drying out pretty fast. We're going to tie a uh, tie these off with a double overhand. Just like that. It was right over left, left over right. Boom. That easy. And that's what we have so far. So to continue this on, we do just like we did when we started out. Take another piece of cordage Hook it up on your needles, needle on either end, and uh, start up on the hole that we just tied off on. 
you run it through and then just continue your X pattern. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I'll be back in a bit. Stay tuned. Okay, I reached the end. This is what we have. So the same deal applies. Now that we're at the end, we're just going to pull the needles off of the end and then tie a double overhand with the two tag ends to uh, terminate this. And what we're going to have to do before this this rawhide still still moist and flexible, but what we're going to have to do is we need to fill this up with soil and pack it with a stick so we can form this out. And we're going to go ahead and do that while we uh, while it's still moist. If the stuff dries on you while you're working on it, just put it in water, soak it, it'll, it'll reconstitute and get soft again. But we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use this. We're going to need a packing stick. So we'll go ahead and use this as a packing stick. Yeah, that'll work perfectly. So uh, I'll go ahead and reposition the camera and shall return. Stick okay, with ideally, me. you should use sand for this. I don't have any sand handy, so we're just going to go ahead and use the soil. So this is where we're going to form this, shape it. If you have access to sand, that's really the way to go. Don't worry about the soil on here, the staining. We can clean all that up later. You can take your packing stick. You want to pack that down in here. want to do this while it's while it's moist and flexible
You're just going to take your stick You're going to pack that material down in here One of these will hold. You'd be amazed at how much you can pack into one of these. So we're only about halfway full, right up about here. Trying to get soil and less organic matter here. These tag ends here, when we tie it off, we'll clean those up later. This rawhide was starting to starting to dry out a little. Not bad, but I wanted to get to the shaping. Shaping part before it, before waiting too long. It's getting there, it's starting to get solid. You can shape it from the outside too. starting to get pretty heavy so we're getting getting a lot of material in there you can move your stick and 
out to the sides. You can feel it. You can feel where it's getting solid in here. You can also feel spots where it needs if it's soft. Like right here it's kind of indented. You can take your stick and move your stick over in that direction. Just like that. And you fill in that little that little void. Pack it. It's getting there. It's not too bad. It's good to bear in mind that this is uh this is going full full blown primitive here with 100% natural materials so the item has the item that we're making is unique handmade no two pieces are exactly alike gives it a lot of character. So you can shape it on the outside here too. See where it needs kind of sight down if you got like an odd bulge or you need to pack it a little more in an area. Get in there a little bit more. Shake it to level it off inside. Put some more. It's getting pretty heavy now. We have a, a low spot. You can kind of squeeze it and with the stick you can manipulate the filler material to where you need it. See how that's starting to, we're filling that in now. It's actually coming out really nice. You want to pack it in pretty tight. I mean, don't get too aggressive and blow your seams out. But you want it... You want it pretty tight in there. Pretty solid. Sand would be best, but the soil will work too. You can just kind of feel it and 
it'll tell you where it needs attention. Getting up near the top now. So we want to fill this these low areas in here. coming out pretty nice. Pretty happy with that. You can kind of squeeze it and mold it looking at it. You can see where there's high spots. You can kind of move that filler material around on the inside. See there's a low spot there. I'm using the stick to scoop. Scoop the material. To where it's needed.
I think we're just about there. Yeah, I think we're I think we're just about there. <laughs> this bottom part we will re-soak. to uh, make it pliable again before we put the stick in and then we're, we're going to lash it off. Ah. I think we're uh, I think we're pretty good here. So that's where we are at present. So we'll let this set up and uh, when I return, we'll go ahead and, uh, and finish this project off. Stay tuned.